folks, welcome back to the Steampunk Desperado channel. This is a place for all things sci-fi and fantasy, with a special emphasis on that most wonderful subgenre, steampunk. Today I'm going to talk about a streaming series on Netflix, which has been all the rage, called Arcane. This is an animation, and it came to my attention because a channel that I follow called Critical Drinker recommended it. And I usually think pretty highly of, of drinkers' recommendations. They usually have a fair bit of commonality in tastes. So I had to check it out. Besides, he also mentioned that it was steampunk. So I definitely had to, had to check it out. Although, as far as the steampunk characterization goes, it's interesting. It's interesting, to say the least. So, I see that from the review site Rotten Tomatoes that this series is getting an extremely good recommendation, like 100% critics, which I tend to discount because they have sort of a hive mind, and but an over 90% audience, which I do take some credence on. So let's see, let's take a look at this and see what kind of impression I got out of it, being the steampunk aficionado and expert that I am. So Arcane was created by Christian Link, Christian Linky, I suppose it's Linky, <laughs> and Alex Yi, and it's based on the game League of Legends by Riot Games, which is kind of kind of crazy when you think about it because it just it's always kind of a challenge to make a decent show out of a game, and most of the time I absolutely hate them. <laughs> Usually they're pretty awful, and. So it's interesting to see what they've done with this one. And plus, if I didn't know a lot about League of Legends. I'm not a gamer myself. I have been told, my son, for example, is a gamer, and he's, he's told me that League of Leg Legends has a very toxic <laughs> user base, <laughs> that he's played it in the past, and that people tend to be very snippy and very uh, judgmental and angry and insulting and all that stuff. And, in fact, the, uh, the Wikipedia article about it actually actually mentioned that, that the uh, company was trying to address this issue, which is kind of funny. But, in any case, I knew nothing about any kind of backstory or any kind of, any kind of uh, world this is supposed to happen in. And so it really surprised me I thought it was one of these games where they just have a lot of different fighters that fight each other, a lot of different characters, and uh, had no clue that you could actually make a story out of it. So, it's basically f focused on a small handful of League of Legends characters, which I had to look up because, as I said, I'm not a gamer, so I wouldn't know about these things. But primarily, there's these two sisters called Vi and Powder, who later changes her name to Jinx. There's also a handful of other characters that are actually actually in the game and the series both. But after that, there's not all that much commonality. And I don't know if there's anything steampunk about the, about the uh, game. And there's definitely some that are... There are definitely some games that I have reviewed and talked about in the past that have that have steampunk elements, whereas I didn't see any evidence. It looked very much like the very fancy, fanciful, kind of colorful, uh, mythological looking characters, uh, like something out of a fantasy novel rather than rather than steampunk. That's one of the one of the primary focuses of the show. And there's a couple other characters that have another character thread, another story thread that's very very central to the story. And they kind of started together, diverge, and come back again. Now, after the first two episodes, I was intrigued. I mean, the the uh, graphics were good, as usual. It's like a 3D CGI animation. So, that was, that was decent. And I still wasn't sure. It still really hadn't hooked me. And I've heard other people say that, that, that it didn't really necessarily appeal to them. So it was kind of surprising to see this fantastic reception that it's gotten. So anyway, a summary of the plot, basically. It takes place in a city called Piltover, uh, and 
I believe that is a place in the game. And there's an undercity called Zaun. And the, especially, especially Piltover has this very steampunky metropolis style when, as referred to referring to the 1930s movie and even more to the 2000 uh, what is it 2001 anime that that was based on the same theme and it's clearly a fantasy steampunk because there's no relation to real history or real places now my main criteria for steampunk are the technology it has to be steam technology or some similar something from similar from that era and it has to have kind of a quasi-Victorian culture, at least, it has, it has some some elements of that. Usually, the dress and the styles are a good are a good uh, indication for that. But that's not all there is to it. And uh, it's also this story is also very interestingly, it's very very reminiscent reminiscent of Trevor Craft's Lantern City graphic novel series, and I have the first three of them. And uh, it's a very good and very intriguing, and it has a similar, similar premise. There's an upper city where the elite lives, the uh, aristocracy and so on, and there's this repressed lower city where the poor people live, and there's kind of this constant uh, struggle between them. And in fact, there are police in Arcane that look very much like the police in Lantern City, with the same kind of military-style uniforms and the same kind of old-school helmets, with gas masks attached. And that's interesting. I wonder if that's a coincidence. I don't know. It may be an homage or they may have just ripped it off. I don't know. But uh, it's, as I see it, Arcane isn't so much steampunk as kind of a pastiche of different elements. It's got cyberpunk elements. It's got a little bit of Star Wars in there. It's even got some hip hop. <laughs> <laughs> of all things. And so I'll, I'll get into this a little, little bit more of this as I go along. As I said, there are two main storylines which involve two pairs of characters. First is Vi and Jinx, as I was saying, originally called Powder. And they're little kids, they're orphaned, they're living with, by their wits uh, in kind of a youth gang. They've got, they've got some friends, some good friends with them, a couple boys, and uh, they kind of steal to survive, but they've also been semi-adopted by this kindly older gentleman called Vander who uh, owns a bar in the Undercity, and he also was a revolutionary that, from a revolution that failed. So he's, he's kind of, I guess he's been pardoned, but he's still kind of, now he's still kind of on their watch list. And so these kids are, are out out and about, mucking about, swiping things. Uh, they're they're kind of by they kind of live by stealth, like the like um, the pickpockets in Oliver Twist. The other pair of important characters are Jace and Victor, and they are scientists. And uh, Jace is a rather rather hunky young rising star uh, from the aristocracy of Piltover, and the other. Victor, he's kind of a sickly looking fellow from the Undercity, and he's and he, he's always coughing into his handkerchief with, with blood in there, which is a, definitely a Victorian thing. He's got tuberculosis, you know, that, that kind of a trope. And they are working with this revolutionary technology that they call Hextech, and it involves these blue power crystals. Looks very video gamey, because here are these, these crystals, they, they you don't know where they come from, how they work, and whether they discovered them or created them or whatever, but they just are. <laughs> and uh, and they have this mentor called Heimerdinger, who is this little furry guy. <laughs> he's like a, a critter. I mean, he, he reminded me of somewhat of a cross between Yoda, because he's wise, and uh, an Ewok, because he's furry. And so I'm going to put in some spoilers here, so if you actually want to see the series without knowing what's going to happen, then uh, you better not watch it. But anyway, it starts out when the kids, uh, with uh, Vi and Powder, they steal, they, they rob, basically break into this lab that uh, is run by Jace and Victor, and they steal stuff. And Powder 
ha happens upon these par par crystals, and she puts them in her pocket, and she doesn't tell anybody about them. <laughs> yeah, they're kind of her little secret, and they, you know, turn out to be rather dangerous. Now, they're explosive. It's this is this, an energy source that, if it's not really fully controlled, can be bad. And so, a little bit later, there's there's kind of, some kind of scuffle they're involved in. I know that the police are after Vander and all that, and there's all these gangs. And anyway, it just happens that Powder has been playing with these these stones, using them as kind of a weapon, you know, tossing them or or flinging them or whatever. And in the act of defending herself, uh, she ends up causing this huge explosion that uh, kills a whole bunch of people, including, you know, Vander and her friends and so on. And, and uh, she thinks that her sister, Vi, has been killed as well. Little does she know, she hasn't been. She ends up being adopted by this, by this evil criminal drug lord named Silco. He's a really creepy looking guy. He's got one weird eye that uh, he needs to inject stuff into, whether it's drugs or medication, or, you know, whether it's pleasure drugs or medicine, we don't really know. <laughs> and uh, so, at first, you kind of get the impression it might be a really creepy thing, but I guess he's, he's, he's treating her as his daughter. So he's, he's not that bad of a guy. Uh, he's not entirely evil. So the interesting thing is that these are these are these main four characters: um, Vi, Potter, who renames herself Jinx after she is adopted by this bad guy, and uh, Jason Victor. Those are all significant characters in League of Legends. And there's a few other minor ones that are mentioned here that are also from League of Legends, like Echo, who's a young friend of uh, Vi and Powder. Uh, Caitlin, who's a, a uh, female police officer who later befriends Vi, and uh, some character called Singed from the Underworld. <laughs> All these strange, strange names. So, anyway, so the, the, it follows these two storylines. As far as the scientists, they're working on this hex tech, and they've got this and I believe it, it has to do, they're trying to find all these applications for it. And I know they've got this kind of Stargate thing up on, uh, up on high, one of the high buildings or something where these airships cruise through and then they get, boom, off to a different part of the world, which is pretty crazy. Not, not very steampunky, a little bit too futuristic for the, for the genre, but nevertheless interesting. So they're working on this and they're trying to make this, this, technology into something that will benefit all of mankind. And I guess uh, being kind, because there's a whole bunch of other, you know, critters, all, all sorts of uh, intelligent races, including the furry hammer guy, and there's like bat people and so on. And that is a little jarring, because they really don't have any, any uh, reason to be there in the story. I mean, it's not so much atmosphere as you see in in Star Wars, for example, for example, the cantina scene, uh, but but it's because you know they just pop up here and there, and it's not an element of the plot like, for example, Carnival Row, where you have these uh, fairies and um, uh, satyrs, excuse me, that are you know different races that are are being uh, suppressed and uh, discriminated against. So that's not part of it at all. Well, you do feel, you do get the distinct impression that humans are on top, and, and that like the ruling council is mostly human. Well, there's a, there's a robot on it. Anyway, so these guys are are eager to announce this for Progress Day, which sounds a lot like the, the uh, Life Day from uh, Star Wars Christmas. Uh, but Heimerdinger, he's like worried this is a dangerous technology, and they have to work on it a little bit further. But you know, Jace is impatient and ends up, ends up, uh, you know, ba basically bad mouthing him, and then, and then they boot Heimerdinger off of the uh, High Council. I guess they did have a non-human on there besides the robot. It was Heimerdinger, and uh, they replaced him with Jace, and uh, which is 
which allows them to continue with their technology, and it also allows him to get to, to uh, get in the good graces of this gorgeous councilwoman named Mel, <laughs> and she's she's kind of this aristocrat, and you don't know a lot about her. She's from another country. She's estranged from her family, and uh, she doesn't appear to work, and doesn't appear to, and she doesn't appear to. Have uh, be a rich widow or anything like that. So you don't really know why she's uh, why she's on the council like this. Uh, a lot of the stuff in the show is like this. Anyway, so they so basically she and uh, Jace, the hunky Jace, become lovers. And in the meantime, Jinx is becoming more and more crazy and more and more unbalanced, <laughs> and she's getting herself into more and more trouble. And uh, Vi has been arrested and put in jail for a while. You know, she was she was basically involved in other gangs, just low level thieving. She gets arrested and later later on released uh, because the police need her help in tracking down her sister, who did who she didn't know was alive. <laughs> so it's so it's an interesting. We have the feud between the sisters. We have the rivalry between the two scientists. Victor continues to get sicker, and he's trying to use hex tech to. Um, make himself well again, to, to preserve his life. <clears throat> He's kind of turning himself into a Mr. Hyde, almost, it seems like. And uh, meanwhile, there's also this, this drug called Shimmer that Silco is, is uh, distributing. It's kind of a DNA, uh, DNA-modifying drug. Sounds, hmm, sounds familiar. I don't know where I've heard of that. <laughs> anyway, uh, and it's turning people into monsters, uh, although it kind of accelerates them. So we've got this this little weird thing there too. And there's some interesting people, there's some interesting characters. Visually it's great. There's a lot of a lot of great characters. And the main four characters I think are really good too. I mean as far as as Vi and Jinx and uh, and Jace and Victor are, are fairly good. A lot of the other characters are kind of stereotypes. They're they're kind of flat. But there are quite a few of them, so you can't really expect to flesh them all out. So anyway, as, as things as things go along, there's this increasing rift between the upper city and the lower city, and you know, Jinx is out of control and, and Silco is trying to rein her in and and there's these feuds in the underworld. Some pretty cool characters there. I know there was a guy who looks like a, a in like an Aztec warrior with this weird metal jaw. And I can't recall what his name was, and I and the guide online wasn't all that wasn't all that helpful. But anyway, he, he was cool, and a lot of the characters are cool. But again, they're just basically they're just eye candy. They're just something to look at. And uh, as far as the content, it's it's kind of aimed at adults. There's profanity. There's a lot of violence, and uh, there is uh, some sex. <laughs> particularly between uh, Jace and Mel, who are very pretty people. <laughs> so, and it's not explicit or anything. And there's a little bit of a hint of a same-sex relationship between Vi and Caitlin, the uh, young lady cop. Although, nothing specific. Uh, but they're saying, what about us? <laughs> You don't really normally say that if if you're just if you just met this person for a little while and what what will happen to us? <laughs> and uh, Kaylin is also one of the characters in in League of Legends itself. So it's it's funny that they just they're just this handful of them. And so all in all, I mean all in all for a modern show, it's not bad. I mean there's it's not as woke as you might think. You have the you have the continual, I mean, the usual trope of rich versus poor, of course. And then there's not really all that much about racism or, or anything like that. It's an extremely egalitarian society as far as as sex, as far as gender goes. There are uh, there are like all these powerful females in the military, in the police, in in uh, a leadership and so on, which is which is kind of contrary to usual steampunk uh, Victorian 
aesthetic when, when it's usually male-dominated and women are struggling, which is usually part of the conflict. Uh, like, uh, like our I Own D series that Mrs. Mrs. Desperado and I have ha are, have published two and are working on a third right now. I'll put a link to those in the comments. But anyway, so it's, it's totally modern, in fact, more so than the real world is or probably will ever be. <laughs> with, uh, with, you know, for example, there's, there's this, uh, Mel's mother is this very fierce looking warrior woman, Amazon type, who, who uh, leads a rival city. Uh, I don't know exactly where because you don't know where anything is on this, in this world. And she's very much an Amazon. You know, she's not like, she's not like one of these little, she's not like Queen Victoria or anything like that. No, no, no. She's a, she's a, like I said, she's a warrior, which is, which is kind of very out of step. But I guess it, I guess it's got a little feeling of exotica in there, which, which makes it okay. The things I liked, well, I liked that it wasn't overly woke, even though it was, was a, a little bit jarringly egalitarian as far as the sexes, although that's partly because the game has this, it's, the game seems to have more female characters than male, go, go figure, and that it had a interesting, interesting characters, and kind of a, kind of an intriguing story, and that the art was really good, and the, and the voice acting was good. On the downside, uh, some of the extreme diversity was kind of was was kind of unnecessary, especially with all these non-human characters who really didn't add anything. Heimerdinger is also <laughs> is also in the the game, so I think that's why they made him this little furry guy. They could have made some. They could have made him a human with like a like a beard and a mustache, I suppose, like a little little short human. Uh, but no less they, they chose to do that. And there's some very jarring assortment of technologies from far future <laughs> Stargate stuff to, to the fact that poor Victor can't get his uh, tuberculosis treated without resorting to bizarre experimental uh, DNA modifying uh, medications. So it's, it's like I said, it's a pastiche. And that's one of my problems with it. And I think that's part of the reason why I didn't, why I'm not going to rave about it like so many people did. I mean, it's okay. It's, it's good. It's interesting. But I don't know if I would have finished watching it if I hadn't decided that, that as steampunk, as a steampunk or allegedly steampunk work, that I was uh, obliged to finish it so I could review it. So that's, the, so that's one of the things. And I think it's partly because, again, everything's kind of mishmashed together, and the story's kind of complicated, and a lot of stuff doesn't make sense. Like the power crystals, where do they come from? Why, you know, why are they a big deal? And so on. So a lot of that stuff, you don't have to answer everything. That makes the story dull. But you do have to answer some things, <laughs> and... And that made it a little bit of a, a little bit of a problem for me. So would I recommend it? Mm, maybe, maybe. I, I would say you know check it out and, and see if you have if you have a need for a new series to watch. I uh, wouldn't be surprised if it got another season. I it probably already has one because it's been getting such good reviews. I don't know. But uh, so I would like mildly recommend it, and I would actually. Only probably give it like three and a half years out of five is my rating, because I don't know. It just it just didn't grab me. It just didn't grab me. It did mostly hold my attention, but for whatever reason, I don't know. So this has been my review of the the uh, new, very recently, I guess end of 2021 uh, series Netflix series Arcane, based on based loosely on the Riot Games uh, online video game, League of Legends. And if, please let me know what you think in the comments below, especially if you're gamers and, and you have a gamer perspective on it. Thanks for bearing with me. Please like and subscribe so we can continue to get out the good 
steampunk word. For now, this is the Steampunk Desperado saying, Adios amigos from the Steampunk Desperado channel, where the past meets the future and the present is extraordinary. Thank you.